Democratic lawmakers are finally making huge progress on the Ford stimulus package, and it has been decided that billions of dollars in unused relief money will be going towards new stimulus checks for certain Americans. If you want to receive this Ford stimulus check, then be sure to continue watching this video because you definitely don't want to miss out on this. The Pennsylvania legislature has until June 30th to pass a new budget approaches. Pass a new budget, support for some spending of the state's billions of dollars in remaining stimulus money, and surplus tax revenue is gaining bipartisan action. Discussions are preliminary, and top budget negotiators want to reach a deal as soon as possible, but lawmakers, lobbyists, and top staff pointed to a small number of partisan proposals that have been put forward. On issues from the environment to child care, there could be building blocks for a spending plan. The House Appropriations Ch Committee Chair told a part of this week that we move forward trying to identify areas of agreement first, and then we'll identify areas of disagreement and try to work through those. Each year, Pennsylvania's governor and legislature must agree on how to route tens of billions of dollars to education, economic, development, and human services. These are decisions that affect every person in Pennsylvania. But the state's financial picture has changed in recent years, with the state's coffers getting a $1 billion boost from stimulus money in 2021. In response, Wolf and his legislative allies called on the legislature to spend some of that windfall on higher education, paid family leave, and school repairs, among many other priorities. Early this year, Wolf released a budget proposal that would appropriate billions of dollars more to education and infrastructure. Republicans countered that additional spending would actually, would actually fiscally be responsible. But everybody, Pennsylvania still has about $2 billion in remaining stimulus money and at least $5 billion in surplus tax revenue. To address the soaring cost of living and inflation, Governor Wolf is pushing the legislature to approve using American Rescue Plan money to give people $2,000 stimulus checks. They would go to every household earning less than $80,000, which is the majority of people in Pennsylvania. Other issues are are getting Republican attention, everybody. Like more state funding for child care and pre-K, nursing home and housing. Progressive lawmakers have been building bipartisan support to for a broad housing plan, Whole Homes Repair Fund, which would actually use stimulus money to provide grants to homeowners and landlords alike to make renovations big and small. After two years and six relief bills into the crisis, the U.S. has spent the majority of its available stimulus relief funding, but billions of dollars across a handful of categories have not gone out the door. Beginning under the former president and continuing now with President Biden, Congress has approved some $4.5 trillion in total aid spending. According to Treasury Department data, federal agencies have formally committed to using about $4 trillion in that, and have made about $3.5 trillion in actual payments to date. Budget experts say that it can often take time for the total pot of funds to make its way to the American people. That's because government agencies such as the SBA and Department of Labor go through a process of legally committing to a portion of a lot of funding, which is known as obligating. Then they start to actually spend it. The $500 billion or so in available relief resources have not been obligated and may not end up being spent by agencies. What are your thoughts on this, everybody? Is President Biden going to do something about this and help out the American people with stimulus checks this year? Or will President Biden hold back the stimulus? Tell me what you think on this. Mr. Dodaro, I'm going to start with a round of questions and then uh, it looks like the next person up will be Senator Johnson. Um, Mr. Dodaro, to date, GAO has made 121 recommendations on actions that Congress could take to address the wasteful spending and inefficient operations listed in the annual duplication report. There are currently 59 open recommendations. How should Congress prioritize which recommendations to address? Are there particular recommendations that you think we should focus on first? Uh, I absolutely think those recommendations that have significant dollar savings potential ought to be among the top priorities. Right. You know, I issued a report last month that I've repeatedly uh, warned Congress that the federal government's on an unsustainable long-term fiscal path. The more actions Congress could take to reduce federal spending, the more uh, that situation will help be resolved over time. There's also very important sets of recommendations that go to improving public health and safety. And I'd also give those high priority as well. The recommendations we've made, for example, in this year's report about dealing with what's, what's becoming, you know, we have 50, about 50 million gallons uh, of, uh, of hazardous waste uh, that we haven't got rid of and, and our costs are going up every year. I mentioned the health care recommendations we have. There's the recommendations we have on biodefense strategies this year are very important. Recommendations on the pandemic. So so I, my, my view, Senator, would be 
where it saves a lot of money and where it has a direct impact on public health and safety, those ought to be the top priorities. Thank you. Uh, there are eight new recommendations across five issue areas for Congress in this year's report. One involves allowing the Department of Energy to run a pilot program to examine alternative. Well, I would agree that uh, this year is very different than 2020. Uh, however, when you look at things like the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving averages, it is now down to 2%. That certainly was present back in 2016 and 2018. Uh, we have finally started to see some evidence of a little bit of VIX backwardation, although it's not at levels that I think are probably important just yet. Um, you know, there's 70% of stocks now that are down more than 20% off their highs. So, you know, any given year when the market's down 20%, uh, the odds certainly are in your favor to try to take a stab at trying to buy for a rebound. Uh, but it's much, much different, you know, in saying that is it a bottom versus the bottom. We have almost 500,000 people every year who go bankrupt because of medically related uh, expenses. And we have 60,000 people who die every year, if you can believe it, because they don't go to a doctor when they should. And if that's not a definition of a cruel and dysfunctional healthcare system, I don't know what is. Furthermore, we are living in a country today where drug companies are making huge profits while people split their life-saving pills in half because they can't afford them. And we have a situation today for elderly people where they can't afford to get the dental care they need, the hearing aids they need, the vision they need, because Medicare does not cover those very basic needs. And I can go on and on about health care, but the bottom line here is that what we have in this country is really disgraceful. And that is an issue together we are going to have to work on. We must have the courage to stand up to the greed and recklessness of the insurance companies and the drug companies. We have to substantially lower the cost of prescription drugs. And we have got to work to guarantee health care as a human right for all of our people, not a privilege. So that is a broad view of where I want to go on health care. Now, education is also within the jurisdiction of the Health Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee. And today, when I think about education, I am thinking about a country where somehow or another we can afford to give massive tax breaks to the billionaire class, but meanwhile, our teachers and our children exist in classrooms with broken chairs, flooded buildings, and inadequate staff support. And we're living in a country where many thousands of our teachers, and they are truly heroes and heroines, are in.